Your teenage child has been diagnosed with functional neurological disorder, short for FND, and your child has been missing school for days, weeks, and maybe months. What do you do as a parent to help your child get back to not only school, but result in FND and get their life back? Hi, my name is Dr. Lee. I'm a pediatric health psychologist and chronic pain survivor myself. My mission is to help teens and their parents resolve persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and FND so that they can get their life back and feel like normal again because I truly believe these teens deserve so much better in their lives and I am on a mission to help these teens that are out there. Okay, so today's video is about teen FND and school. Now, previously I covered two videos about FND and in school, and I have received this feedback from one parent and quite frankly, a few other parents about, well, we are sort of kind of following your recommendations, but my child is still struggling to have these symptoms in school and it is actually making things worse. And as a parent, it's really hard to witness and letting my child force to go to school when my child is struggling. And that got me thinking, well, okay, hypothetically speaking, if this applies to your child who is actually getting the diagnosis of FND, but not in any treatment, then yes, it makes sense for your child to be told to just go to school every day, all day, no matter what, that would be like a torture. And I'm talking about FND symptoms. So it's almost like your child is asked to go to like a war without having any tools or tactics or any training. And then they're just being told, just go, just because you have to go, right? So if that is where you're coming from, then I totally understand. And I feel like it's my responsibility to educate you further. So then you feel like you have the tools under your belt, not only for you as a parent, but also for your teen. So then you guys feel prepared to go back to school. So in this video, what I want to talk about is there are four things that I want to emphasize when it comes to returning to school for your child who is struggling with FND. So let me walk you through one by one. The number one thing that is really important is, is your child's school environment optimal for your child with FND? So what does that mean? What that means is, is your child's anxiety managed well in school. And I'm talking about anxiety related to FND. The other thing is more importantly, is your child feeling safe in school, both physically, mentally, and emotionally all the way around. And related to that, what are the connections with others your child is having, whether with peers or teachers or administrative staff and so forth. Because if your child is not feeling connected with anyone at school and the anxiety is not managed and your child is not feeling safe, because of the FND, both physically, mentally, and emotionally, then that is a problem because focusing on the academic completion is yes, important, but in this context in particular with your child who's having FND symptoms is mm, kind of like a secondary. It's not the priority to recover from FND. Why? Because when it comes to resolution of FND, it's really important for your child to return to normal daily functioning. That includes school, right? But if the school is becoming a huge obstacle, and I'm talking specifically within the context of FND, I'm not talking about bullying that was happening before. I'm not talking about social anxiety that was there before the FND. That's kind of aside. If we're just talking about FND symptoms, that your child is not feeling safe and the anxiety of going to school is not managed, then we need to talk about that first, which leads to the next point of number two, what is the plan? Do you have the plan between you, your child and school and whoever else is involved in the treatment or towards recovery support? What is the plan? Is the plan just going to school no matter what? like kind of going to the war without any training or tools or any tacticals or anything like that. That's a really good idea, right? I agree. And the other thing is what kind of skills and tools is your child using to manage the FND symptoms, regardless of where they are, that includes school. So what is the plan? What is the FND action plan? Without that, yes, your child is likely to get worse because I don't want to repeat myself time and time again, but it's kind of similar to your child going to a war without having any prep. So let's establish FND action plan that everyone is able to agree 
and making sure that everyone is on the same page and then knowing what that page is, right? Because you might be thinking, oh yeah, teachers are understanding when in fact they're not, or you keep telling and asking the school, okay, please don't call 911. This is not a medical emergency. And yet this one student or one teacher or one school personnel keeps calling 911 and EMT and all that jazz. Then it's really safe to say nobody is on the same page, right? So you've got to have the concrete plan so that your child is feeling more safe and ready to go back to school. And on that note, I do have a free PDF guideline on FND action plan sample, so you can absolutely download that link is below. Related to that, it is actually better for your child to go to school every day, even for like one or two hours or first and second or third period, than going to school all day one day a week because then that's too much on and off i would rather your child engaging something every day whether it's a super small amount of time being in school okay so that could be part of the fnd action plan and again it doesn't have to be a long run permanent solution but it can be a baby step and then gradually increase the demand and levels and activity expectations and things like that. Which leads to number three, the third point to think about, and this has to do with you parents. How is your anxiety level? How is your stress level, more importantly, about A, potentially sending off your child to school who may or may not struggle from time to time? How is your anxiety level about that? And more importantly, is it more about your own stress that you actually want to prevent you and your child from feeling sad, upset, crying, and stress? So then you're doing everything and anything you can to avoid that. If you can avoid, great, but stress is something that you cannot really always avoid at any time, right? So yes, your child may have some challenging days and struggles and stressful days and stuff like that with or without FND. But if you are trying to take out all of the stress out or as much as possible, then we're not really sending a good message to your child because what the child's brain is scanning for is, I cannot do this on my own. Therefore, there is nothing I can do, which leads to learned helplessness, which leads to low self-esteem or confidence level. Therefore, your child is less likely to feel like they're in control, which is completely opposite of what we want them to do towards the recovery of FND. Once again, how is your anxiety and stress level as a parent? And if there is any, which I would imagine there are some, because that's very natural reactions to this crazy situation of your child having FND, then what are you doing to manage that? Because co-regulating the stress and anxiety level with you and your child far exceed the benefit over this discomfort of experiencing the stress in the moment. Okay, so think about your own anxiety and stress level and ask yourself, what are you doing to help with that? And lastly, definitely not the very least, in some situations, as I mentioned earlier, let's say your child has been having this peer conflict issues with or without FND or even before this happened, or your child has always had a social anxiety and some sort of trouble staying school or going to school and all kinds of stuff. Then A, has it been addressed? right? Because you just telling your child, you know, well, you just need to go to school no matter what. It's kind of same thing as other people telling your child with FND, well, you kind of have to go to school no matter what, right? Do they have tools to manage that? Are you working with the school, the school personnel, board, district, whoever you need to, to work on that? That's something you might want to think about. The other thing is in the extreme situation, sometimes you might have to think about alternative school setting, hybrid, online, homeschool, e-learning, all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that as a first line of the recommendation because it's kind of going against the grain of the recovery towards FND. However, if you need to, the alternative school setting might be something to think about. So sort of mini checklist would be, are there any other significant factors playing into your child going to school that is really difficult? And then the other things you think about kind of in general is what is optimal learning environment 
for your child with FND at the moment. Again, this doesn't have to be a permanent solution or the only option, but something to think about. Where I would suggest talking first is to the school that your child is currently going or is about to attend, and then talk to them about, hey, do you know anything about FND? And B, if so, what is the typical protocol for FND? And is there anyone else I can talk to? Either education board, state department of education, district, you know, um, any other schools or potentially searching for alternative school environment. But then you can also ask the school, what are the options? Because your child does have the right to receive a proper education. So you don't really have to do this all on your own. However, you kind of have to rally up the team if there isn't anybody around you because you have to be the biggest advocate for your child. Now, if your child is already going through the treatment or some sort of healing process of FND under a guidance or coach from a specialist, then you can absolutely talk to the specialist to work around what is the option here and what are the optimal situation and condition for your child. So just to conclude, yes, a blanket statement, generally speaking, kiddos with FND going to school will help. However, there is a gap between the FND and going to school, which is what are the plans, tools and skills and tactics and strategies that your child can implement. So then the school environment becomes safer and a little bit more predictable environment for a child to be staying in. I hope this was helpful, but feel free to leave me a comment and questions. I would be happy to answer your questions and concerns because it is my mission to help every one of you who is struggling with FND because nobody has to live like this and your child deserves so much better. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.